Jim, a really special way to, to win a game of football. Um, just give us your assessment and your thoughts on today's 2-0 win. It was a good win, Greg. Um, in difficult circumstances uh, assessing my players today and watching them live in front of me truthfully I felt like they were out on their feet a little bit um, and again I felt like I couldn't really help them um, Fylde made changes I'm looking at most lineups today you know they, they make changes they can freshen up um, our options for changes are so minimal it, it's almost not even possible um, and I had concerns pre-game about how we were going to find the energy to, to bring, you know, boxing day showpiece to the ground today. I had concerns about that, and I don't blame the players one bit for being down on energy. Um, they weren't down on fight. They were definitely down on energy. I could see that there was there was, there was a lot of energy in the performance com compared to what we've been recently. But how they found the fight to stay in the game and show enough in the end for us to, to get a victory in what was a, a very close game against a really dangerous opponent, I think, um, is commendable, really commendable. Uh, and to take five points from the last three games with two clean sheets in there, uh, in what was today definitely our worst performance of those three games, I thought in the other two we were excellent. Uh, today was definitely our worst performance out of the three. Um, I think it's really commendable from, from this group of players. and. Yeah, you said it was a, a, a special ending there at the end. For Quakes to go and pinch that goal late on, it's, it's, it's a nice, it was a nice thing for the squad, nice thing for the team, nice thing for the fans. It was a nice moment for the ground, wasn't it? Um, so despite what happened in the celebrations after that goal, which I think are ridiculous and are destroying football, truthfully, destroying football. If you can't cherish match-winning moments that are that late, if you seriously can't walk in front of a corner flag to go and celebrate with your teammate, who you work day in, day out with, who you see try and progress, who you see try and improve us, who's in the gym every single day, in the morning, after training, doing all the extras, whether he's playing well, not playing well, doing everything, and your teammate wants to celebrate with him one side of a line to another, it's killing football, Greg. What is the point, mate? What is it? For a moment like that, last minute, I get that rule has probably been designed for other circumstances within a football match, but to get sent off for that, it won't sour this group's spirit. It won't. It definitely won't. And we'll do what we need to do to rejuvenate in the toughest of moments because we've now only got 12 fit players and we'll go again. But I just think rules like that are killing football, mate. Just to clarify, that's Tyrese getting a second yellow for the celebration. That means he's now suspended for, for New Year's Day, doesn't it? That's exactly what I mean, Greg, yeah. yeah. Just trying to put that aside. Um, we've seen all season, really, the connection between the players and the fans. I think that was no more evident than at the end of the game there as well. It was a really special feeling amongst the supporters who have been here all season and also those who were maybe here for the first time today. I agree. Um, I think that's those sort of moments. They're, they're like elongated celebrations, aren't they? When... when a goal is scored late on and you know it you know it means it's a win everyone shares that moment together it's it's amazing it's what we do it for that's why there should be slight lenience on certain intricacies of rules that really don't matter they don't matter um should be relaxed for those moments it should be relaxed that's when we need to remember we're all human and this is football and we're all here to feel those emotions that's why we do it otherwise we'd be doing something else today wouldn't we um, but nice, nice moment for the ground, nice moment for the team. If we put that incident aside, and it was good to see more fans in the ground today. Um, I think it it led to maybe a a quietish or a strangest atmosphere at times because there's loads of new people here. Um, so how to sing, what to sing, who's who, you know, not really knowing the players. I thought that that was, you know, that's kind of led to that a little bit at times. You could tell that uh, new tickets, new people in the ground today, you, you could feel that at times almost. But I thought it was an amazing initiative from the club. Um, tickets for a pound, giving tickets to our local neighbours, council taking tickets for people in, you know, not so great circumstances over Christmas. All that's like truly like really important to what matters more than anything in sport really. Um, and it's good that all those people today got to see a team that really fought for the town and culminated in 
an exciting goal. They brought their keeper up, we break, we score. Exciting goal and a great celebration um, for all of us. Just ask you about um, Liam Alden's performance. He won man the match, made some big saves, but also two fabulous assists as well. Yeah, uh, brilliant, brilliant. Um, he was what we needed him to be today. Uh, big moments against a real dangerous like counter-puncher of a team. Uh, I've had loads of managers in my office after games, um, week after week, of course, when we played here, and many have spoke of like how dangerous filed are on the counter, down the sides, and I think you've seen it today. And there was moments where we just needed someone to be massive for us, and Louis was in the moment he needed to be. And you don't get that victory without him. The assists, brilliant. They're just part of the things we work on. Um, what he did in the moments where we really needed him to be big, probably even bigger than his assists. And I know the assists led to goals and they're wonderful for the team and they're great for us as coaches when we plan them and we work on them and they come off. It's amazing. feels great. But the moments where Louis had to step beyond the realms of what he, what he just needs to do, he was massive. He was massive. And uh, a, a few of them were in those moments, the, the courage and fight to dig deep when they're out on their feet, Greg. I know they were. I know they were out on their feet, the players, uh, but they found a way. How are we fixed for New Year's Day then? Let me mention, is it 12 available players you might have going into into that game now? Um, we'll be an easy team to read for Beachy, won't we? <laughs> <laughs> we can't exactly uh, change the way we play, what we do, who's going to play, you can't do any of that. Um, I don't even know if the lads can train, honestly. After the period we've just been through and where we've got, I don't know if we can train. I don't know. I don't know if we can tackle each other. I honestly don't know if we can risk tackling each other because tackling each other in training loses you a few players a season. We have to train properly. You have to tackle properly. But when it gets like this, it starts affecting your process. It really does. When you're this limited, it starts affecting your process. Um, so that. I'd be silly if I didn't start thinking about that now, this week. Um, whether we tackle, whether we train. Um, because I have to protect the guys and turn them round and, and help them be the best they can be to go again um, New Year's Day. It was Hendel's 200th goal in English football today. Um, wow. The classic wow. Ian Henderson finish for the, to bring up that number as well. Yeah, yeah the Hendo lob. Yeah, we've seen it so many times, haven't yeah. we? Um, he timed his run brilliantly. Um, I think he's still in his own half, to be honest, when Louis released the ball. I know, I know the filed guys there were, were asking for an offside. I don't think it was. Um, brilliant time. And, and then I just never thought Hendo wouldn't score in that moment. Um, but he's given us all. He is, and similar to the narrative of the answer to the previous questions, I would like to be able to help Ian. Uh, he's, he's going to be 39 in Jan. And although he's evergreen, he deserves some help. Uh, and he fought really hard today, and I thought he looked as tired as the rest of them. I think him and the rest of them, the fatigue they're in right now led to a difficult performance. I've never seen us give the ball away as much, Greg, as we did today. Um, I can say that here because I say it to the team. I'm honest with them. Um, that's that's not their fault. That's that's you know that that it, that's just where we are. Um, Hendo two hundred goals. Wow, amazing. So jealous. I think I scored five in my career. <laughs> Wish I could have just you know. He, he gets to experience scoring a goal that many times in your career. It's amazing. Uh, but. Yeah, Quake's got to experience it today as yeah. well, which is magic for him. First goal, I think, as a professional footballer. Yeah, I would say so, yeah. Yeah, the lads love him. Um, they were all they were all buzzing for him. Uh, he nearly knocked it up, didn't he? But he got there in the end. And um, that was they were both brilliant moments, mate. Yeah. Um, just finally, don't want to bring, well, bring you back onto injury woes. Uh, Brad Kelly's going to be missing for a while now, isn't he? Pretty, is it any injuries picked up? Yeah, um, he needs surgery, Greg, and it's going to be lengthy. It's a shame for him. I feel sorry for him. He's took a new stride this year, making his professional debut. Um, and, you know, I think he feels closer to the team and the group than he's ever felt. Um, yeah, he, he picked up a, 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 an injury in the game that he played against Gateshead really early in the game, which Brad being Brad, he's, he's brave as hell. And he kept it quiet and, you know, wanted to fight through. And he tried to train the next day and he was in, he was in a difficult situation. Um, when we went to see the surgeon, he said, "You know, he needs to he needs to operate on that." So, Brad's going to be out 
for the rest of the season. We don't know how long totally because the surgeon doesn't know till he's inside uh, Brad's knee how long it's going to be. But it's unfortunate for him. Um, I'm sorry for him that that's the case. But yeah, um, we lose BK now and we'll, we'll do our best to do everything we can to rehab him as best as possible.